So I'd, I'd like to, to take a, a little bit of time and talk about um, things that you can do as a bass player to sort of embellish uh, something or maybe throw in an accent or two. Sometimes that can mean a walking line, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a walking line. It can be a rhythmic uh, swell or something like that. Um, so there's lots of different options you can do to create a dynamic uh, within the song. And it can be over a soloist either singing or someone taking a solo or, or lead on an instrument. You know, I think of those two as being interchangeable, um, whether someone's singing uh, the song or um, another instrument is taking a lead, then they are in the spotlight at that moment. And so I think of it as a, as a team player kind of mindset, and I'm trying to think of what I can do to make them sound good. That's the sole purpose of being there at that moment, is what can I do to make their, what they're getting across better and not distract from it. So I think it's really important that when you start thinking about uh, what to do as an embellishment or an accent, that that's the place that you're coming from. It's, it's about them, not about what will I do that make this less boring for me. So that's a really big lesson to learn. And um, once you get there and you're really looking at it sort of in that frame of mind of how you can make the other, you know, what's going on in, within the song better, then, you know, I think you'll open yourself up to a, a lot um, more um, ideas and um, open yourself up to being a much more dynamic player. So um, there's... Uh, like I said, it could be walking lines or even um, a rhythmic feel. And I'll show you, give you an example of that. We've, um, it, we've discussed um, some slapping uh, before. We've got some, several lessons covering the slapping idea. And, and there's a section of, there's, a, there's a, a, a small amount of slapping that you can actually do to sort of accent things. Uh, as long as it's just a little chunk of it that doesn't, you know, distract or obstruct what's going on. So, for example, I'm going to play here, and I'm just playing sort of an E to an A. So I'm, going to... so I'm, I'm using the combination of a leading tone that half step below the, the, the tone that I'm going to, the four. So this is, this is my one. Now, it, it also happens to be a one, three, four. And I'm just, but I'm sort of looking at it right now as a leading tone going to that four. So I'm, but I'm doing two things. I'm actually going there, playing those uh, notes, but I'm also adding a little bit of a of a percussive slap and see how that just kind of just gives that little edge and then it, then it goes away comes back down so there's that dynamic that you're that you're giving the song and then I can bring it back in bring it in and again I think of it sometimes I you know you can almost think of an ocean or, or waves sort of swelling up and down um, sometimes songs to me are like that and what you want to try to do is have those waves uh, f make sense and and be as musical as possible and that that sense of a wave or that dynamic is what really makes music um, appealing and so the next time you're playing um, with folks, um, any particular song, just look for little spaces. You know, um, we're talking about the ends of a phrase, ends of lines, or when you're really listening to um, a, another instrument taking a solo, 
you can sometimes be energized by what they're playing and listen when you're really listening to what they're doing they might be uh, playing something that makes you think about doing something now what you don't want to do is override that solo again it's all about them not you but if you can do something that complements what they're doing at that moment then it's just going to make the entire experience a lot better Thank you.